a useful tool uh, that we have is our phase diagrams. Phase diagrams are pressure temperature plots that show the physical state that is um, stable under those pressures and temperatures. So we have um, temperature on the x-axis, pressure on the y-axis. And we're going to have to be able to label them. They'll come with just the black lines, and we're going to have to be able to label them and identify the points that are on them also. So we you know that at high temperature, we're going to have a gas. At low temperature, we're going to have solid. So solid from the left, gas from the right, liquid in between. Wherever three lines meet, that's called a triple point. So a lot of diagrams will only have a single triple point. Some will have more than one triple point. Some can have more than one solid phase. Water, for example, has about 10 solid phases. Um, oh, rarely, you'll have more than one liquid phase also. There can only be one gas phase. So we have at least one triple point. The line between liquid and gas ends. And that is the critical point where that line ends. That's where the distinction between liquid and gas ceases to exist. Instead, we're ending up with a, another fluid called supercritical fluid, which doesn't have the properties of either our liquids or gases. So the lines that we have around here, so if we go across this line, we are sublimating. So the line itself is the vapor pressure of the solid. So that line, on that line is the equilibrium vapor pressure of the solid at that particular temperature. The line between the liquid and the gas is our vapor pressure of the liquid. Coming across that would be evaporation or vaporization. Going across the line between solid and liquid would be melting. And that line between the liquid and solid represents the melting point. or the melting um, equilibrium uh, temperatures. Another thing that we can get from our phase diagrams is which state is more dense than the other. So to figure that out, we take a point near the line separating the phases that we're looking at, and we go up in pressure. The phase that we end up in is going to be the more dense one. So in this particular one, we start in the liquid, we increase pressure, and we end up in solid. So the solid is more dense than liquid. And this is typical. Most compounds are going to be in this fashion. Over here, we start in the solid. If we increase pressure, we go into liquid. That means that liquid is more dense than solid. This is not typical, but this represents water. Water, we know that uh, the salt flows from the liquid, so the liquid is more dense than the solid. So if we take a horizontal line, so at a set pressure, go across, we can create a heating curve. So as you go across, we're adding heat to raise the temperature. 
we start in the solid and we increase the temperature of the solid. We start in the solid, we increase the temperature as we add our heat. When we hit this point, we're stuck on that point as we melt it. So that is the melting point. We stay at that temperature until we melt our solid away. Then as we melt our solid away, we can leave that line and enter the liquid. And then we can warm up the liquid. So we can warm up the liquid. Then we hit this point, we're at the boiling point. And we're going to boil the liquid away. So we're going to stay at that temperature. We're going to stay on that point until we boil that liquid away. Then after the liquid is gone, now we can heat up the gas phase. We can heat up the gas phase. So we're going to know the uh, areas of the phase diagram, the processes crossing the lines, um, and what state is more dense than the other state. On the heating curve, we need to be able to identify the section on the heating curve. So uh, down here, we're starting off with the solid, we're warming the solid, then we're melting the solid, we're warming the liquid, and then we're melting the liquid, and then we're warming the gas. And melting points and boiling points, we know our temperature. So we take that line across, and where we get that, that is the temperature that corresponds to that melting point and that boiling point. 